Well, hello everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to carry on with the Carn Effects project. Really great to see you back here for that. Um, I'm aware that I'm not the speediest painter, so what I'm going to do over this next few days is I'm going to put together um, multiple small sequences of finishing the model um, and hopefully get it completed and also a nice uh, video package of that. So um, I suppose we ought to get over to the table, have a look at uh, the miniature and get cracking straight away. So over to the table. The paints we're going to be using, just as a recap, are going to be all from the Vallejo ranges. We're going for black, we're going for dark green, we're going for lime green, we're going for yellow green, and we'll be using some bone white. And then when we get to the siding talons, we'll change colors a little bit, but I'll talk about those at the time. In the meantime, uh, we'll get the palette filled with some paint I'll show you some basic techniques and then I will work my way around the rest of the model completing him and hopefully we'll get a finished result very shortly. So I don't know if you remembered in the last video but we did go over the bodywork and cover it in a mixture of black and dark green which is why it looks so dark but you can just see the essence of green in there. Because it's now probably at least a week since I painted that uh, we will reactivate the paint by putting another layer on so a tiny little bit of black. Uh, and dominantly green on the palette. Um, and then what we're going to do is I'm going to go over all of the processes. I'm going to leave, um, so if you look at the darker recesses, I'm going to leave those dark. Edges and underscorings of bone, so the top of the bone here goes dark green and the edges as well, but I'll leave a little bit of black in the middle, which isn't really black because we've already done a, a coating of green on it. And I'm gonna work my way around the model, doing all of the upper surfaces uh, and making sure we catch those again with the green. I'm also going to um, come onto the plates um, and the plates I'm going to leave a little area of black I'm going to come back out of there in stripes. Let's just get that in focus better. That's better. I'm going to come back in stripes, catching all the edges there, bring them round. Reload the brush, but not with too much. And again, and we'll do this all the way around the model. When it comes to doing the vents, um, we're going to um, capture all of the vent. These little in undulations here, we'll capture them as well. They're not deep enough to stay black. Um, we will not go into the little recesses where there's the, uh, more than like the internal structure of the bio, of the, um, the can effects. And we'll just strike across those so we don't actually end up going inside them because they're going to be a lot brighter color when we get get to those the tops um, we will go all the way across and we'll run inside although we are going to put some um, essence colors and i'll do that all the way around the model and then we'll come back and see and have a quick review so as we look at the model we can now see that deep rich green um, background color that's going to give us the, the depth that we need so that all the rest of the colours will really sort of shine through and, and pop. And so we've mixed some of the dark green now with some of the lime green to give us a, a, a sort of mid-tone. And we're going to cover around about 50% of the plate to aim towards the edges. Uh, and then we're going to build, build away from the darkness with the other colours and slowly, as you can see in the other plates on the head, slowly work to the higher colours as we get towards the edge of the plates. And we're just replicating that colour scheme um, as we see any dinks or marks in the armour we're going to leave those black um, so just as I work up there and on this next piece just below here we'll leave a little gap just to emphasise that there is a crack in the armour there um, and that will just add to that theatrical nature of the paint as we go around it um, and give it a, just an extra bit of presentation um, and your eyes will be drawn to those little cracks, those little points of interest. All of these little um, 
crenellations here. We're going to actually put some colour on top of those as we work around as well. Leave that on the high points and uh, work our way around. Okay, so I've been around the upper carapace and just put on that next layer of dark green and um, lime green. And you can see like the little hash marks of the paintwork. I'm now going to go over that all again. I've been around the nodules at the front and just highlighted the upper areas of the nodules and left the recesses between them dark. So as we come into the highlights, it's going to make those deeper cavities look even darker. Uh, so I'm going to go, go around now with the um, lime green um, and literally exactly the same again. So making sure there's not too much lime green on the brush and um, just gently putting different length stripes onto the paintwork. Uh, we'll modulate a little bit and go a little bit longer there. And then just work our way around the model doing that, catching the upper surfaces, and I'll come back and show you the, that when I'm done. Okay, I've been around the carapace now with the lime green on its own, with a little bit of um, with a little bit of the um, dark green mixed in with it. Um, the barnacle sort of effect on the top. Um, I've tried to, where the little joins are, do long lines and then in between the long lines then do smaller lines so it, it makes it look like it is coming up. So if I just get my brush, so on this edge section here it's a little bit longer lines, it's shorter lines in the middle and then where it drops down on that side longer lines again. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to go around with um, the yellow green. Uh, and when you're doing these thin lines it's really important that you do keep wetting your brush because as the paint dries you just need to keep making sure that your lines are nice and thin. So. Okay, and I've come into focus again. And then what we're going to do is carry on around the model, slightly shorter lines than before. And you just work over them over and over again until you get to the intensity that you're looking for. And obviously you can do this in any color, it's just layering. Um, so I'll just work in this one area a little bit. And you can see that I'm building up the colour dominantly on the border edge. And we'll just go over that again. And again, I'm going to do that. And you can just see there, I don't know if you can see it, I've just been working the area just a little bit too long and I've pulled a little bit of paint off. So we'll just go back in with a wet brush. And just fill the gap back in. But as you do that all the way around and then go back over it, you won't pull it off because the paint will have had a chance to dry. But what we'll do is we'll now work our way around. The barnacle is going to be the same again, but just slightly smaller areas. And we'll come back when I've got that all finished. Well, although it's only been seconds since the last um, clip, um, it's actually been a month in reality. Um, there was a couple of days where I was meant to be filming and due to the lovely Storm Babette, uh, we had a power cut here um, and so I couldn't film. And then I've started a new job, um, which has meant an awful lot of reading to get up to speed with everything that I need to know. And so unfortunately, I've not been having any chance to paint. Um, so let's, let's get back to it. Now, where we left off was um, doing the highlights on the carapace. Um, now what we need to do next is do the extreme highlights and for that I'm going to get some of the um, the yellow green and mix that with some bone white um, and that's going to be our extreme highlights. So I'll get that mixed up and we'll have a look. So we've got the um, yellow green and the bone white both by Vallejo and we've got those mixed on here now um, and I'll just drag across the green until there's like a vague essence. I might 
actually just add a little bit of white as well. I want it a bit uh, more vibrant than that. Oop, Jesus Christ. Okay, that was a bit wild. Especially with the fact I only want a very small amount. in the pot. And I do like to um, put in as I'm mixing colours because it gives you a bit of a feel for what you sort of need to be doing yourself. And what we're going to do is the extreme highlights now and just pop the colours. So we bring that a little closer. If you compare that first one that we've done to the ones behind it, you can just see that there's a little bit more of a, a high gradient in the colour. I have left quite a bit of water on the brush and that's been deliberate. Um, because we haven't painted this miniature for virtually 20 days, the uh, saturation of the colour I'm using won't leach into the previous layers because they're not fresh. And so I'm, if I use just that colour neat, um, there's going to be no crossover as the paints settle together. This is just going to be raw colour going on, so I need to be very careful with it um, because I have left it so long between layers. So we'll go around the rest of the model, I'll put all those highlights on, and then we'll come back and move on. So the next thing to do is move on to these exhaust stacks. Um, the inside we're going to paint more of a flesh tone, um, but the outside we're going to go for the green again. And we're going to try and replicate the same colour scheme from the Hive Tyrants um, stacks. Um, so we're hopefully going to move towards that sort of a shading. So with heavy greens at the bases, coming up to really real pales at the top, even more exaggerated than actually on the carapace. So let's crack on. Now again, because it's been a while since we've painted, I would normally mix more of the lime green into this uh, first transition layer, but I'm going to go quite dark um, so that we give it a chance to build up some layers so that as I apply further layers, there will be a degree of um, subtle blending goes on. So we're going to go for lots of colour at the top. Again, avoiding those little crevices. We'll take the colour really, really far down. I don't want to go into those holes, so we'll just strike across those holes. And then gentle lines up. We'll do a couple of the stacks at the same time, just to make sure I'm allowing drying time and I can swap between stacks to um, show you painting. Uh, obviously, as we've mentioned before, if you paint one area too much, uh, then all you end up doing is lifting the paint off. So we'll paint a couple of areas at the same time. And I'll just move around the rest of, uh, we'll do one side in fact, I'll do, move around the rest of this side and we'll get one side done, and then I can move on when you guys are uh, busy doing your own figures. So I got all carried away and not only did this side, but I've done the other side as well. So uh, we've really got moved on there. Now what we're going to do is introduce a lot more of the green into the dark green or the lime green into the dark green um, and go for a much, much brighter color. Nice, a um, lot of moisture on the brush again and then just backstroke in through the paint to get rid of a little bit of excess and then just work our way um, probably around about two thirds of the tower, each tower. And we'll start on the middle one first. 
just avoiding all the recesses. And just as we can around the structures, try and get nice long drawn strokes. And then as we come to the front end here, what we're doing is obviously we've got some shadowing to mimic. Um, so as we come to this front end here where it's a little bit overcast, we're just going to avoid a little bit with the colour. Take some of that colour off. And just attenuate the colour, bring it so it's not too vibrant at that front end. And drag the colour up to the tops of the towers. Colour, avoiding the cracks in the tower and pop the colour along the edges and what we will do is a second coat um, once we've given this first coat a little bit chance to dry because it is quite watery so I'll just leave that chance to dry. I'll work my way around the rest of the model. I will apply the second coat and then I'll come back once we've got this next transition layer complete. Okay, so after three coats of paint, um, we are back and having a little look. Um, I've also left this to dry for a couple of hours, um, snuck out to the gym. Um, and so it has had a little bit of drying time, but what we're going to do now is move straight onto the lime green on its own, work our way around the model again. Now, one of the things I have done is I'll get a little bit closer. Um, just at the base of each of the little vents, the little holes here, I have just run a little bit of the paint as well. And I'll continue doing that with the highlights just to emphasize. And I will run the paint only on the bottom edge um, so that it gives you that you can see light reflecting on that bottom edge uh, and it gives it a bit more depth. Um, so we're literally just gonna, um, again, slightly less area. So we're just gonna pop some little um, stripes onto the paintwork to keep the texture going. Just careful around the vent holes. And again, this may take a couple of layers just to get a depth in the paint. <clears throat> there we go. just to keep it tidy as we go around. Narrowing up as we get to that top lip there so that we've got that dark overhang casting that shadow still. And I'll work my way, oh, there we go, I'll work my way around the model. I'm just going to pop it over this um, on the top edge of the horn, the chimney uh, as well and carry on building the light that's landing on this top edge avoiding those little um, divots that have been taken out of the shell emphasizing where they are and then I'll literally work my way around all of them, creating that bit of extra depth, and then we'll go on to the next level. 
So we're now going to put a highlight coat on the chimneys. Um, if they have a proper name, you'll have to uh, let me know. Answers on the postcard too. And as we do these, these highlights, every single stroke is going to be a slightly different length. Obviously avoiding the overhang as we come around there. If we do catch the little vent at the side here, that's not too big a deal because we're going to black that up and repaint it anyway. So can afford to be a little bit careless there. Run another layer over the top. So hopefully there. there we go. Oh, it's just I'm just dimming the light a little bit. Hopefully there you can start to see we're getting a bit more of a highlight in, and it's giving us that lovely effect, bringing the contrast. Of so for the final highlight, we're going to take the um, yellow green. We're going to mix. Um, some of the bone white again and a little bit of white maybe a little bit more white that's better and we're going to go around the very very highlights now, the fortunate thing is that now we have actually been painting a few layers. Although this looks really, really bright to start with, it will absorb into the low, lower layers and darken up, which is why I've taken it so bright in the first place. Again, every single stroke is a slightly different length. And I'll go around those and then we can call the chimneys done. Um, this time, um, I'm not going to highlight in these vents. I'm just going to leave them at the green level of the previous layer. Uh, I don't want them to go too bright because they are in shadow. Uh, even on the upper surfaces, I'm, I'm not going to touch those again. And what I'm going to do on these upper surfaces here is because they are slightly angled, the highlight colour I'm just going to run on one side to just re-emphasize where the light is actually coming from. Just using the side of the brush and I'm just going to edge off those bits and really emphasize that there is a gap there and um, work my way around and I'll come and um, show you the finished product. So we've finally completed the actual main part of the chimneys and the thing we're going to do next is we're going to move on to the little vents on the side here. They'll only take a couple of minutes to do, a couple of quick easy steps and then that's the chimneys done and most of um, the upper carapace. Um, so let's get on with that next step. Right, so for the final step for this video is going to be um, putting in the vents here. Um, so what we'll do is we'll get a little bit of white, which we'll get our trusty cloth and wipe off as much excess as we can. And then we just gently, gently, oh, we're going to just stroke the brush. across each one of the vents and it'll just leave the paint on the ridges and we're just going to leave a little trace of just normal white on each of the vents so that when we actually do introduce a colour it's got a really strong vibrant background to go on to so it'll make the colour just pop a little bit more. OK, 
Okay, I'll work around those and um, that will be the video finish for today. So there we have the final finished carapace and um, chimneys. Um, starting to look a little bit of a, a mean beastie now. Um, next video, I think we'll start to look at doing the completing the body. In the meantime, I'll finish doing the rest of the armoured sections um, and uh, get all that complete so that we can concentrate on the um, exoskeleton and also then the claws uh, and try and get this model finished finally. Well, it's been quite an ordeal to get to this point, but with Storm Babette. Uh, cutting my power so that I couldn't do the video on one day I had planned uh, and what with starting a new job and having to do uh, quite a bit of work to, to get ready for that um, we're, Here we are 20 days later and only just getting the video out So um, thank you for your patience um, I'm a little disappointed that I'm not getting uh, on with the miniature quicker than I am but that's painting um, But we've got the carapace completed now and I'll work on the other bits um, before the next video we'll get the exoskeleton done next and then we can do another video on the claws and I think I'm going to just be a little bit more patient so the videos don't get too big um, and you have some enjoyable content to watch um, so only one thing left to say are we painting minis yet finally hell yeah and I'll catch you in the next video